uh, CPAP mask. Oh, great. Yay. Hello. <laughs> okay, got it. Great. So we we're just talking about pressure injuries um, and how to look out for them, where they show up and what we can do for them. So causes of pressure injuries are obviously pressure and that those are going to be found over a bony prominence or under medical devices. So particularly common areas to look for are the sacrum, sit bones and under um, orthotics or braces. Um, the picture and the top is what we call stage one pressure injury where the skin's intact and we found a red area over the sacrum. When we do the little blanchable test to see if it turns white and then pinks back up, it is not blanching anymore. So it's a true pressure injury. We wanna get pressure off of that. Um, and then the, the photo below um, shows you where it looks more like a bruised area and that was found under a mask strap. So um, for a, someone with a, wearing a CPAP mask. So that's just kind of a reminder that sometimes those pressure injuries can be a little bit sneaky um, where you find them. But if there's a pressure source, from a device or over a bone, um, then it could be a pressure injury. So you really wanna be paying attention to any new redness um, in open areas. We really wanna help prevent these um, as well as know how to quickly manage if we're starting to see some intact redness. Oh, let me go to the next slide here. Okay, so let's talk about prevention. Obviously that's one of the best things we can do if we start to notice um, there being a little bit of redness, maybe still blanchable, we really want to be paying attention and, and getting pressure off of that. Um, so along those lines, it's really important to be doing daily skin text checks, um, particularly in those vulnerable areas like the sitting surfaces and under medical devices. So we'll talk a little bit more about how you can do your own skin checks at home in those hard to reach areas. Um, but it's really important to be monitoring early to catch red areas or pressure injuries when they're starting um, to prevent them from worsening. Because there's a lot we can do, um, you know, once we see a, a um, less advanced stage pressure injury, just a stage one, the skin's intact. Um, there's still a lot we can do to get healing. Once the skin's open, um, it can be a little bit harder. So make sure we're doing those daily skin checks and we're seeing areas of redness. Uh, we really want to pay attention and, and offload that pressure as much as possible right away. How do we do that? Um, so one of the easiest things to do um, is, um, I'm sure many of you recognize those, those Mepilex foam dressings that come in lots of different sizes. Um, that's something that many, uh, many families have at home already, or you can obtain from um, an encounter here at, at the hospital if you're here, um, where we can help to offload that foam and, and get you set up with that if we're noticing a problem. So those foam dressings add some extra padding, and, we, and that's what we need. We need some padding to get the pressure off of those sitting surfaces or the bony areas, um, as well as... Um, we want to um, make sure we're repositioning frequently. So if we're seeing redness on sitting surfaces, sit bones or sacrums, we really gotta be especially careful to make sure that we're doing even micro shifts, those little shifts, um, at least every 20 minutes when we're up in the chair. Um, and then be mindful of um, when you're in bed too, if if you're needing assistance. So we're, we're frequent repositioning. When Once we see a redness or a concern, we want to make sure that we are doing frequent repositioning. So again, up in chair, at least every 20 minutes, we're doing little shifts. And if we're in the bed, make sure that we're offloading that affected area at least every couple hours, using that foam dressing if we can, and then being mindful of you know surfaces. So the sitting surface in um, in wheelchair or chair or the bed itself. You may need a little bit more offloading there as well. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that resources, you know, if it if it might even be time to consider um, some remapping for your wheelchair uh, surface or something like that. Um, but that's the biggest thing is we really, as soon as we notice uh, a possible pressure injury, we wanna be really being very careful to get that pressure off as soon as possible. So if you've noticed that the skin is open to a pressure injury, then we want to be add a little bit of extra love to that, that wound. And we want to give it some topical treatment. So um, what that means is we just want to do, make sure we're doing a little bit of extra cleaning 
And we want to make sure, and that can just be with gentle soap or with sterile water or saline, um, keeping it nice and clean. And then we may need to add a topical ointment such as um, an antibiotic cream. Um, so something like um, triple antibiotic ointment or um, something like that if, if you reach out to your provider um, to um, just help prevent any infection. So just know that once the skin opens, we, we do wanna make sure we're keeping it clean and protected. And we might need to add that little um, antimicrobial ointment to help keep it especially safe. So when to get medical help. So um, obviously that that's a concern, when to call, when to not. Certainly if you have any questions or concerns, we want you to reach out to your provider who knows you best, okay? So if, especially if you're noticing any signs or symptoms of infection, so if you have an open area of skin on the wound and you're noticing redness, swelling, bad smelling drainage, um, or pain, or it feels hard around there, we definitely want you to, to be calling. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about resources to call, but we want you to seek out some additional medical advice. And then if you've noticed that there is just a really poor healing or very slow to heal wound, uh, that's another reason to seek out some help to see what we might need to do to really get some good healing there. And then if it's device related, so um, if especially if it's a device that you're going to need to use ongoing, um, whether it's a CPAP BiPAP mask or orthotics, or even a, your wheelchair, um, you know, you those are those are reasons we really need to probably seek out some extra help to check our fit of those devices, um, check maybe the um, remapping even for our, our sitting surface or our chair. Um, so those are also reasons to reach out if, if you're noticing a pressure concern under a device. Um, and then also um, partial versus full thickness wound. So um, what that means is, you know, if it's a little superficial area, um, just a little tiny scrape. Um, you know, we're not as concerned as if it is looking pretty deep um, or you can see some white at the base of it. Um, that is a little more concerning. We might need to give that some extra love and attention. So we'd want you to reach out about that as well. Um, and then I wanted to mention um, just going back when, when it is device related possible pressure injury or, a you know, you know, it's a pressure injury then you can also be thinking about using foam to protect under that medical device. So uh, if it's a mask, then using the, a thin foam underneath that, or if it's um, a, an orthotic device, um, using a foam padding under that. Um, and again, you might need some, some further guidance with that. So we do want you to reach out for some additional um, support for those concerns. Okay, and, and I'm definitely going to leave some time for questions um, at the end too. Um, so write them down if you have them as well. Um, moving into moisture associated skin damage. Um, so this is another really common concern. And the cause of it is obviously too much moisture. Um, when skin is overly wet, it, it breaks down, it becomes um, very weak, it doesn't have its normal protective properties. Um, and it can break down. Um, and actually, it is more prone to pressure injuries as well. Oh, good. You're asking. I'll look at those questions. Great. Um, Okay, so moving on, here's some photos um, of common places you might see moisture associated skin damage. So around stomas, um, and that includes G tubes, which is really a stoma and a tube, a gastrostomy, or um, around tubes, if you've got some leakage at a tube, um, and then in skin folds and creases and to the buttocks area. So the cause of that moisture obviously can be from drainage from a tube. Um, it could be from stool leakage from an ostomy. Um, and in the skin folds, a lot of times it's just um, from, you know, you, you sweat a little bit, things are, are kind of warm in those skin folds. So it's really common to have a little bit of moisture in a skin fold. And then there can be a little bit of rubbing or friction in the skin fold. So it's, it's common to get some skin breakdown in those skin folds. And then around the diaper area, of course, um, you get moisture from urine and, and sometimes stool, and that can also lead to um, moisture associated skin damage, as well as sometimes what we call incontinence associated skin damage or diaper dermatitis. So let's talk about what we can do for that. Oop, 
sorry. <laughs> I'm still having trouble with my slide advancing, apparently. Okay, there we go. Um, so what do we do? Protect the skin, obviously. Um, we may not be able to stop the leakage or the moisture um, that is occurring, but we can protect the skin. Um, so we want to do that with skin barriers. And there's lots of different types. Um, and I've shown uh, some pictures of some common ones. Um, and one of the easiest ones is that's readily available at pharmacies and over the counter are zinc oxide based barrier creams. And so a few of those are shown there. Desitin's a common one. Uh, we really like extra protective cream. Um, we've got Triad, there's Boudreaux's butt paste. So there's a lot of really good barrier ointments, but you want to look on the back and make sure you've got at least 30% zinc oxide. That's kind of the gold standard to get a good protectant. And you can just slather that to the area that that is being irritated. So you can put that into the skin folds. You can put that in the diaper area. You can protect around tubes with that. With stomas, um, you won't be able to use ointment as much. So when you're talking about an ostomy, um, an ileostomy or a colostomy, um, of course, you'll need to think about using a different type of barrier. Um, and another barrier is the skin barrier film. So some of you may recognize the Cavalon skin barrier, which is a really common one we have at our hospital here. Um, and often um, you might have that in your home supplies for um, some, we use that a lot in wound care, honestly, to, it's kind of your liquid mandate. It protects from moisture and friction. So that can be a really nice option as well for really superficial uh, moisture associated skin breakdown. Um, and that's something you might need some assistance obtaining if it's appropriate, but I just wanna show you that in case you do have skin barrier at home, um, that is something that um, you can certainly consider for, you know, a, a more superficial skin breakdown. However, those, those um, barrier ointments are probably going to be your easiest bet that's um, easy to, to find and easy to use at home. And then the other thing to think about, of course, is how to contain the leakage. So especially if you've got a really leaky tube or um, an, uh, even a wound that's leaking or or any kind of problematic situation where you have that, that too much moisture that you're trying to actually not just protect the skin, but contain. In those situations, you may need a little additional assistance, um, but absorptive dressing. So, you know, around tubes, um, sometimes with, if you protect the skin, sometimes using that, that split gauze can be enough. Sometimes you're needing a, even more absorbent specialty dressing. Um, and those do exist and you might need a little bit of guidance. And we'll talk about that as well with some resources. But um, that's the other thing that, you know, sometimes we can actually help to wick the drainage and contain it a little bit better. Um, but regardless, we want to protect that skin. And again, this, the ointment is a really nice and easy way to do that. Um, and again, readily available. Other common skin concerns. So I just want to mention these, um, even though I won't go into a whole lot of detail about them, but these are definitely things that we get questions about. And I imagine um, you see these at home, but, you know, scrapes and abrasions. So, um, you know, that will just present, you know, maybe from sliding or some friction where you see a superficial area that's scraped or abraded. Um, and then skin tears, which is we're, are also going to present as pretty superficial uh, around some kind of medical tape um, where we're removing that and you see that little superficial skin injury there. And both of those, you know, when you have a superficial area of open skin like that, for those reasons, a good rule of thumb is keep it clean and dry and covered. Okay. And what I mean dry is there's actually a Goldilocks principle with wounds where you want it to not be too wet and you want it not to be too dry. And I know that's a little confusing, but wounds need to be just the right amount of moist to really heal well. So if you have an abrasion or a scrape in it, and there's, you know, it's kind of, there's some drainage and um, moisture there, you do want to help to maybe change that, that protective dressing, even if it's just a bandaid change it a little more frequently to help keep it dry. So the moisture or the drainage isn't just sitting there. And then alternatively, if you see like a dry scabbed area and it, you know, you want to help that heal, then you can do, you can add a little moisture to help it heal by adding a little bit of Vaseline under that band-aid. So again, just kind of think like that, not too wet, not too dry. 
but definitely keep it clean and covered if the skin is open. And then another common concern can be contact dermatitis or a skin allergy. And that would present, you know, typically um, just um, a little more quickly. Um, sometimes you might see it under tape or a medical device or, um, for example, like a, a skin sticker for um, around a G-tube or an ostomy um, or just using something new, using some type of new ointment or cleanser. Um, and that's going to look, present kind of like an angry rash. And of course we would want you to be um, seeking out some additional assistance and taking away the offending, um, whatever it is that's causing the allergy is obviously the, the best option for that. Um, I bring this up just to keep in mind in case you are using something new, um, particularly tapes and things. If you're just seeing like right under the tape, right in the margins of the exact outline of a type of tape or a skin barrier, if you're seeing, you know, kind of a red raised angry rash, that could be um, some type of contact dermatitis. So that is definitely a good reason to check in with a medical provider. Um, and then fungal rashes. These are really common as well. Um, again, often in areas that are moist. Um, so in uh, around the buttocks and skin creases, um, cause, and these are, are more common, you know, if, if, um, someone's been recently had antibiotics or has an issue, you know, it's kind of had a history where, um, you know, you get, you know, that you get fungal rashes, um, or maybe you have, maybe there's some thrush going on as well. So, um, I mentioned fungal rashes, um, because those are definitely something that you're going to need a little bit of assistance with, um, to get some type of antifungal to be applying there. Um, so you, you might think about, you know, could this be a fungal rash? If you're seeing, you know, kind of a sudden or worsening of a rash and there's little pin pot, pinpoint prickly dots around the edges, um, maybe there is, you've recently finished some antibiotics. Those are all good reasons to think, oh, could this be maybe a fungal rash as well, a yeast rash? Um, so I mentioned these um, just so you have, you know, they're on your radar a little bit. Um, and then, you know, a couple of those that, that contact dermatitis or fungal rash, generally rashes are something you would want to be reaching out um, for some additional medical advice. Um, so let's talk a little bit about resources. What I'm saying to reach out, um, of course, a great resource anytime 24 seven is our parent smart helpline, um, where you're going to talk to a very skilled, experienced nurse who can kind of help guide you in the right direction. Um, and I've got the number here, 720-777-0123. So that is always a great option if you're not sure what to do um, and you're not, um, or if you just need some immediate help um, after hours. Um, and then of course your spina bifida team. We, we know that they're amazing and available for you. Um, so always a great resource and your primary care provider. Um, so your primary care provider is whoever knows your child best. Um, you, you want to remember them as a great resource for, for common skin concerns as well. Um, and in all of these situations, photos can be very, very helpful, um, especially uploaded to my chart. Um, they can be really helpful tool to get some quicker interventions. Um, so I definitely keep that in mind as, as a really important tool. Um, and then moving on, I'm, I wanted to address a couple of questions that um, had been raised. Um, I know just the SB team had said these are commonly come up. And then I just want to open up in, you know, in a few minutes to those questions that in the chat and other questions you might have. Um, so how do you check what you can't see? Um, Obviously, that is a big concern if you're not able to visualize your skin for your daily skin checks. And that is where your mirrors, your handheld mirrors, um, or your even for your full length mirrors in the bathroom or and or a skin check buddy can be your friend, um, especially over your most vulnerable areas, um, typically sitting surfaces and bony prominences. Um, or under those medical device, don't forget your heels and your feet. Um, so again, just using a handheld mirror to help visualize those areas. Um, we highly recommend, um, or using a handheld mirror, looking at behind you to visualize your back in a, in a full length mirror. Um, and then always, you know, if you, if you have someone helping you at home um, or your parent, obviously um, you can be helping to do that, that um, 
that little head to toe check, especially, you know, when you're bathing, it's a great time. Um, but you do really want to do that daily, especially if you have some particularly vulnerable areas um, that you're concerned about. Um, and then another common concern is tips for skin health um, and wound care for um, surgery wounds. Um, and so what I would strongly advocate, make sure before you go home that you have a really good understanding of the wound care. Um, if you're doing the dressing changes, knowing, you know, make sure they're putting step-by-step -step instructions in your discharge and have a good understanding of who to call if you have concerns. Again, you can always call the Parent Smart Helpline. Um, but if there, if the surgery team, you know, if it's a particular surgery, neurosurgery or um, general surgery, having that number um, to know who to call on your discharge instructions is going to be really important and knowing when to call. So beyond just signs and symptoms of infection, are there are there other reasons that you should call? Um, and certainly anytime you you have concerns, we we want you to to trust your gut and be calling and make sure that you know the follow-up plan as well. Um, who is going to check on this wound if, if needed? Is that going to be your PCP? Um, are you just going to send a photo in my chart? Um, and so just really have a good understanding of that. And then remember again about your those resources we talked about. Okay, so I want to address really quick, and I know um, I'll watch the time a little bit since we got started. Are we okay going a few more minutes, you guys? Yes, yes. Okay. We can, yeah, take five or, or so minutes to answer okay. questions. So be Absolutely. We'll do that. And, and certainly if there's any questions that come up um, that we aren't able to address, I will try to um, send out an email to you guys, okay, to the SB team, and we can um, try to get that out. Um, okay, so Nancy, what about a head injury with a shunt? How can you tell? Great question. And so that would kind of fall into like the, the post-surgery um, tips and tricks. So I would really be reaching out to the team that did the surgery. Um, so your neurosurgery team there um, and make sure you have a really good understanding of um, what they would be concerned about, when to call. And, um, you know, that's the big thing. I, we get questions about parameters um, and just really understand when to worry and when to not. And something else that you might consider is the power, again, of photos where you can take a photo um, of how the wound looks um, before you even um, head home to know, have something to compare it with. Um, or if you're, if there's a certain type of way that you're dressing that wound, you could take a photo of how the dressing is placed. Um, so remember that those photos can be really helpful for that. Um, let's see. And then Ivan asked, where could we find that padding for the injuries? I know it's, it's, it's tricky to find those Mepilex or those foam dressings sometimes. And unfortunately it's especially hard to find them when it's preventative, which is so silly. Um, it's easier to get when you have an active wound. So my advice to you would be um, certainly if you're seeing that ongoing concern, um, reach out to your providers. Okay. Get some assistance. You might need to get some of those um, foam dressings added to your DME supply. Um, and that there's ways that we can help with that. If you're local in the area, um, sometimes we can um, we have, we get donated samples and things. And sometimes we can leave a few samples. Um, if it's an acute concern, we might be able to, to leave that, um, at the info desk. Um, and then good health will, are you guys aware of that? That is an awesome resource. Good health will has, um, unused clean medical supplies that have been donated and there's several locations in the area. So that could be another resource. And they do have a lot of pediatric grants where many times it's very low cost. Um, so you might call and ask about that. You know, can I, do you have any um, bordered foam dressings? You certainly can buy them online or even honestly at Walmart and Walgreens. Um, there are a lot of those options for um, foam dressings. Um, but we, the, the take home message is if it's an ongoing concern, again, under a device that you're going to need to continue using or a new concern um, or a wound, a true wound, we want to make sure you're, you're getting adequate wound supplies. So please reach out to the resources so we can help. And then, okay, Phoenix says everybody, what about Meta Honey? We love Meta Honey. The medical grade honeys, the gel, and there's other types um, of alginates, those are fantastic. We are often called the Meta Honeys on our team. <laughs> 
um, because we use it a lot. They're very safe. And so the medical honeys that come in a gel form are really fantastic. They're very similar to like an antibiotic ointment. In fact, they are an antimicrobial. Um, they're very safe. They help to clean up a wound. If there's some a little bit of scab or gunk in there, that can be a great resource. So if you have um, medical honey, meta honey or thera honey gel at home for a superficial wound or a little wound with scabbing, that is absolutely a great plan. Um, in fact, I have some in my little first aid kit um, for my kids, um, but just know that um, you don't have to have that. And actually you can find a lot of the medical grade honey products now at um, Walgreens and Walmart too. Um, but I, I mentioned um, that if it's something that you're familiar with and you already have, um, it definitely can be very appropriate to use on um, a superficial wound um, that you're trying to um, keep free from germs and, and clean up a little bit. Um, but again, remember to, to reach out for guidance if if you're needing, if you're seeing some, you know, a bunch of gunky stuff in the wound or a deeper wound, um, we, we would want you reaching out for some guidance. But we love medical grade honey. It is fantastic stuff. Um, okay. And then Nancy, let's see, dermatitis, you have to be on hypoallergenic products. Yes. So that's a great question. Um, and again, I, you know, a really important concern. Um, and what I would say is I would reach out to whoever was helping you with that dermatitis. If it was their dermatology team, which they are our go-to skin experts for any time we have suspect some type of allergic dermatitis or an ongoing skin concern, dermatology is going to be your best experts for that. Um, so I would probably reach out to them. Um, and then I would also make sure that moisture is not contributing, you know, to any of that skin breakdown. So that's really, I'm glad you asked that question. And there are a lot of hypoallergenic products available. Um, but sometimes you, you might need even if it, even a different type. Um, so I would reach out to whoever was diagnosing you with that dermatitis, um, or the dermatology. Great. Thank you, Bree. Um, great, wonderful. Well, is there are there any other questions? I know we're we're kind of out of time, but um, is there anything real quick? Or um, pop it in that chat meeting, and I'll make sure to or chat um, the meeting chat, and I'll make sure to address that. Yeah, we um, our next speaker, as far as I can tell, is not here yet. So okay. um, if we have more questions, we have we do definitely have some time. So. Um, and if Great. not, then that's okay too. No worries. All right. Great. This was a super, super helpful and interesting presentation. Thank you so much. Oh, good. Yes. Well, thank you all so much. It's, it's such a pleasure to be here with you all and, um, take home messages, take good care of your skin. It's the biggest organ in our body, believe it or not, it is your skin. So it's really important that you keep it safe. Um, and, and intervene early if you have a concern. Okay. And remember, you're not alone. You have lots of resources. Okay. Hopefully you feel that way. And if you, again, if you never, if you don't know who to reach out to start with that parent smart helpline sometimes. Okay. Great.